Hey guys, what's up? It's Clay Ranger 143 here along with That's And yeah, guess what guys? Me and Heat Cats are in a video together. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> and your eyes are not playing tricks on you either. And there's a good reason why we are both making a video together. Because in this episode of Radio Reviews, we are going to be reviewing a particular radio that Heat Cats, Shadow Frost, or EAS Alert 88, and several others have been torturing me to get until I got one for Christmas, which was three days ago. And by the time you see this video, I don't know when it will be released, but yeah, Christmas will be over by the time I release this video, hands down. But still. Anyways, that particular radio is the Spark... SHD-TX2. Let's get down yep. to it. Greatest freaking DXing radio on the planet. So, let's get down to it. Yes, I got a spark. And by the way, to those of you who haven't done so already, get a frickin' spark! You won't, you won't regret it. And do a band scan when you do get I want to see it. And be sure to turn on emergency alerts. Just do me a huge favor and do that. This is how you do it. You just turn on the menu button a number of times until you get this, and then you just turn it on. Yes. But anyways, first, a little bit of backstory behind the Spark. The Spark was made by Grace Digital in 2014, I believe. This radio has been somewhat out of the public eye until just recently, in fact. I believe people started to know more about the Spark last year. Particularly you, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Because... Didn't you buy one of these, like, last year? Didn't you get your Spark last year, and then you started telling everyone how much of... I got it just, like, a year ago from about this week or so. Oh, and then as soon as you started to use it, you realized that it was a really good DXing radio, huh? Yeah, no kidding. So, I got Camp WS... Oh, yeah, there's 91.5 right there. Notice the lazy HD FM. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, there's Heat Cats' so Spark. What's going on next? 7.70 a.m., what station is that? That is, well, actually, uh, here's KNX. Cool. I got multiple. So, anyways, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> nice. So, I think it's time to go ahead and get started on reviewing the Spark. Keep in mind, the Spark is not a weather radio. It is an HD radio with only AM and FM capabilities, but it has some benefits to make up for not having the weather radio feature. We'll get to that in a minute. So, as I totally not try to imitate Doug DeMiro as I do this Radio Reviews episode, um, we're just going to take a look at all of the quirks and features. Yes, I said that. The quirks and features that the Spark has. This is the SHDTX2, yet again, as I've already said. HD radio. Now, keep in mind, when you first get it out of the box, it is a very small radio. Look at it. It's about the size of the palm of my hand. It can fit in my one hand. That's how small it is. Yeah. It's about the same size as my phone. It's about the you same size... 
Huh? You can fit it in your pocket. Yeah, it's about the same size as an Xbox One controller. It's so small, you can fit it in your pocket like this. See? Look, it's in my freaking pocket. In my PJs, it's in the pocket. Flawlessly. Try doing that with your... Try doing that with your Sanjian. Oh, yeah. And now, it's very easy to carry out in public. Very, huh. very, very easy. Oh, yeah. And this is a portable radio, as it says so on the box. But, yes, the Spark is a portable radio. The only difference is, is that it does not have weather radio. Like, when I say the only difference, I mean, like, the other handheld radios, like the Midland HH, the 12993. Those are portable yeah. handhelds, but this is a very strange portable handheld, but it's a good one. And this is why we are reviewing this particular Spark. So as you can see on the box, it says SHDTX2 Portable Radio, featuring HD radio technology, HD radio emergency alerts, critical life-saving messages, Spark, and no... Spark is not its own company. Spark, as I have said already, is made by a company called Grace Digital, which is known for making Bluetooth speakers, HD speakers, etc., etc., etc. So this is not its own company. The Spark is made by Grace Digital. It just doesn't say it. So anyways, I think we are about to go into the first feature on this particular radio, and since this isn't, since this isn't a weather radio... There are no button beeps or a siren test. But we're going to get started with... I think we'll get started with the antenna. Because why the hell not? I will admit, this first feature is kind of bad with the Spark. This is pretty much the only bad feature that this radio has. The antenna is not telescoping. It isn't. It's like the 12-255 the Radio Shack 12-255 to be exact, it can only go from side to side. It cannot rotate like most weather radios can. It can only go from side to side, up and down. It's not a telescoping antenna. But that feature doesn't really get, it, get in the way considering the amount of reception this radio gets because this radio really does get good reception. And since it's an FM radio, it's not really necessary to have a telescoping antenna because you can get... FM stations somewhat easier than weather radio stations, I assume, because they have a higher wattage, like about 50,000 watts for most stations. Some of them have... Some go under 1,000. Some of them go yeah, under 1,000. California go up to 150. Yeah. But, but yeah, if you wanted it to rotate, you can't. That's the only bad feature this radio has, the antenna. But we're not going to let that get in the way of its reputation, are we? So, nope. let's go it's ahead and move on. Excellent reception. Yes, excellent reception. Let's go ahead and look into the next feature that the Spark has, and that would be the tuning and the display options. Now you're probably wondering... Well, if he's going to review the tuning options or the display options, the radio has to be on, right? Well, it is on. That's because the Spark has a special way of powering it on and powering it off. This, there's a power button right here. I mean, it's pretty obvious already, but still. Um, the Spark has a unique way of turning itself on and off. You can just press this power button and it actually saves power. So just press the button once. And there you go. And I knocked it back for the fourth time now. This thing hardly can this thing can hardly stand up. That's another issue this radio has. It can hardly stand up. And it's it can, easy for me to stand it up. You just have to have a very uh, nice sur uh, servant. Or you can have the adapter support it. But still, this doesn't have an adapter plugged in at the moment. The adapter is all the way over there. Um, but yeah. Now the radio is officially on, and let's get to the tuning options. So I'm going to raise the antenna real quick. I'll keep in mind, 
keep in mind that this radio, it still has a lot of potential, which is why we're going to discuss it right now. So anyways, as you can see right now, the spark is, if it'll focus, if it'll focus, come on. As you can see, the spark is picking up WSPA FM all the way down in Spartanburg, South Carolina, I believe. And as you can see, it's an HD radio station. It has the triangle on top, but we'll get to the triangle in a minute. So here's what the spark can do. If you want to find the best station with the clearest signal, you just press the seek button left or right, and it will automatically search up the next station that has good reception. And if you keep it on there long enough, it'll actually lock in how many HD formats it has. Like, for example, you see that HD1 plus to the side of the frequency? You see that HD1 plus to the side of this frequency, which is 97.9 WPEG FM? You see that HD1 plus? That means if there's a plus on the right side of the HD1, that means it has more than one HD station. Like, here, see? Now it's HD2. So, this radio can pick up multiple HD formats on several stations. Here's another example, 96.1 WHQC FM in Shelby. You see that HD1 plus? You see that? Now it's on HD2. If it still says plus aside on HD2, that means it has HD3. So this radio is really an HD radio. I mean, it truly speaks for itself, which is why it has that badge on the bottom of it. So, yeah, here's another one. This one I don't believe is an F, uh, HD station. This is WXRC FM in Hickory, I believe. Yeah, WXRC. Next, here is WNKS FM in Charlotte. This is an HD station, 95.1, KISS 95.1. The HD1 plus on the side, press it, and you're on HD2. It is an amazing feature that this radio has. I'll give it that. But now let's go into the display options. You can see there's this display option where it can display both HD stations playing each songs on each format. Like, for example, HD2 is playing, I believe, um, now, hold on. I forgot. That's one thing I forgot about the Spark. You got to have a clear signal in order for it to display the different HD stations in a list. Yeah, um, I do want to mention that HD signals, um, they'll sometimes real up additional stations that you otherwise wouldn't get. Sometimes they're translators of, uh, like, they repeat AM uh, stations, like sister AM stations. Sometimes they're, like, old tracks. It, 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 uh, it depends. Right. As you can see, on HD1, it is displaying the song playlist. As you can see, um, no, I'm not turning that on. No way. No, 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 no. I'm not turning that on. But anyways, as you can see, it is displaying the songs on both HD formats on a list. The next display option is this. You can display the clock. But what's interesting about this clock on the Spark is that it actually displays the seconds. It displays the hour, the minutes, and the seconds. Out of all the weather radios and any radio in general that I've owned, I have never seen a radio that does this. Ever. This is a first for me. Because the fact that it can display the exact time that the, the clock is ticking... That's just cool to me. I know it may sound weird to some people, but hey, it's a cool feature that the Spark has. And here is the next display option. This displays the alerts you got. We'll get to that in a minute. But for now, let's go ahead and get into the next feature on this radio. And that would be the Voice Assistant. <laughs> Yes, you heard me right. This radio talks. It has a voice assistant. It's not activated now, but yes, it can talk to you. 
Kind of like the 12-519 can speak to you when you have one unread message or signal loss. Except this one tells you the frequency, what buttons you are pressing, etc. So to activate it, what you do is you go into the menu. You press the plus button for the tuning once you come to the voice assistant option. Or actually the right arrow, as a matter of fact. You point it to on and then press enter. Now once you have enabled once you have enabled the voice assistant, it will sound like this. Just watch. I think the volume has to be on. No way. Yeah, it does. Okay, never mind. Hold on. Hold on a second. Up. Down. See that now? You see yep. it? That's the that's the same voice that's used. Uh, if you get an alert on the Spark, it'll say like test alert, test alert, or safety alert, safety alert, brothers. Tune up. Tune up. Tune up. Ninety point three. Here's the voice. Tune ninety point. Tune up. Ninety point nine. Tune down. Ninety point seven. Ninety point seven is WFAE out of Charlotte. Tune up. Ninety point nine. Now tune up. Ninety one point three. Down. As you can see, the voice is down. Ninety. As you can see, the voice is working perfectly. I just have the volume on low because I want to avoid getting copyright strikes on this video. So, yeah. This radio actually has a very helpful voice assistant. So, that is a pretty useful feature that this radio has. I'll give it that. But after a while, if you want to do some DXing, it kind of gets annoying, but for the people who need assistance with these types of radios, very useful feature, I must say. So we're going on to the next subject, and that is receiving alerts on this thing, basically. Triangle. Yeah. Let triangle. <laughs> Remember that benefit I mentioned earlier about this radio not having a weather band function. We are about to get into the HD radio emergency alerts critical life-saving messages feature, a.k.a. the triangle, a.k.a. what the SEMA first alert WX268 could do when that radio was made in 2004. Right. There are different ways that they receive the alerts. Yes. The SEMA First Alert WX268, which I have reviewed when Nicholas was here, when we were having our meetup back in August, actually does a similar procedure when it activates for AM FM alerts. The only difference is with the Spark is that it does not activate with the same headers as HeatCats already said. Instead, it activates through something called the EAS box or something like that. So, or caps. or caps. So, could you, since you're an expert on this, would you mind explaining exactly what that is? So... The way that the AHD signals, uh, like, only the stations with the triangle on top have this ability. Not all HD stations, let alone others, have it. Um, so let's say that something gets received, you know, a, uh, or sent, a weekly test, a monthly test, or civil emergency message or something. The uh, I believe the, EA, the triangle, like the HD radio emergency alert feature is connected to the station's EAS box. So if... For example, they sent out a weekly test and it would set off your receiver. Or if they sent out a required monthly test. Um, I've seen uh, there are two 
different kind of ways that you would see them displayed. You'll either see them displayed with like the state that like the string, like the EAS decoding, like for example, you know, civil authority has issued a required monthly test for these areas until this time. And you'll usually see the station center ID in there, uh, or you will see the capital alert uh, straight from the EAS box. So you might see like, this is Yakima County Emergency Management conducting a test. I've received um, test alerts using, on both, uh, using both different displays. So. So, what he is so what you are basically saying is the EAS box is basically the only way that, if not the only way that HD radios can receive, you know, AM, FM alerts if the station has the triangle like WSPA 98.9 does. That's why I have the spark yeah. set on 98.9 because 98.9 is an HD station. Yeah, it has HD one and HD two, but it has that triangle on top of the screen. That triangle is necessary if you want it to activate for AM FM alerts, because that triangle means that this station has either a cap or an EAS box into it. So this is W. Yeah. I, I think it does cap when it can, and then if it doesn't have cap, then it uses the EAS box. Right, but that triangle, right on the top of the screen, you see that? Right above the point in between the 8 and the 9, above that, that triangle, that indicates that the spark will activate for any alerts that are received through this radio station. Now, the particular county warning area for WSPAFM is for, it's in South Carolina, by the way, since it's in Spartanburg, I believe. And um, I could be wrong. Actually, he kept, could you verify that for me where exactly WSPA is licensed to? Uh, all right. Let me, let me get it up. It yeah, you're right. It's in South Carolina. I think about it before, and I know it has a triangle, so it is licensed to Spartanburg. So it would serve the Greenville Spartanburg area. Um, so it so it is licensed to Spartanburg. I was right. Yeah, you were. I figured. Anyways, and thanks so thanks for verifying it anyway. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Whenever that station has that triangle, that means it will activate for any and all EAS alerts received through this frequency. For example, yesterday, which was the Wednesday, well not Wednesday, Thursday the 27th, Thursday the 27th, yesterday, I received this from WSPA without even knowing it. I was sitting on my chair playing Forza Horizon 4, typically, and I look back, and I see that my Spark screen is lit. I look a little closer, and I see that it reads, Test Alert, and I thought, wait, what? Yeah. Turns out I got a required weekly test, FM, you know, I got an FM required weekly test for WSPA, and the county warning area is included in this RWT. So this RWT that was sent over WSPA actually helped me a lot with determining the counties. Because earlier, the date that I'm filming this, December 28th, there was a tornado warning for Newberry County, and I thought it served Newberry County, but it didn't. That is useful information to know, because this station is known for relaying tornado warnings, hence November 30th of 2016. When I was in the Subaru getting the tornado warning when maroon 5 was playing yeah that alert but anyways the counties for wspa fm are abbeville anderson cherokee chester greenville greenwood lancaster lawrence oconee pickens spartanburg union and york counties so i'm gonna read this just for the hell of it because here is what the scroll says. I'm going to do it like in the tone of the Dave voice, but not deep like the Dave voice. But here's what it says, basically. An EAS participant has issued a required weekly test for Abbeville SC, Anderson SC, Cherokee SC, 
Chester SC, Greenville SC, Greenwood SC, Lancaster SC, Lawrence SC, Oconee SC, Pickens SC, Spartanburg SC, Union SC, and York SC, beginning at 12.32 p.m. and ending at 1.32 p.m. WSPA FM. So that's how you know that the spark will activate for AM FM alerts received on HD radio stations. As long as it has that one triangle, it'll go off. If it doesn't <laughs> have the triangle, if it does not have the triangle, it will not activate. Nope. Here's another thing. So you don't actually have to be tuned to the station at the time of the alert to receive the triangle. As you all probably know, unless you, uh, I'm not going to say it, but um, so as if if you learn from me, then you should know that EA, all EAS alerts have a purge time, like an hour, or just however much is in the same header. Um, if you, if, let's say that WSPC, uh, WSPA activates or required weekly test and you miss the EAS alert, you tune into the spark within, let's say the purge time is in, let's say uh, you tune in maybe 50 minutes after the test, it'll mm -hmm. ring the radio anyway. So you don't actually have to be there at the time. Um, I was, I went to Seattle uh, a couple months ago, um, like maybe an hour about, it's actually about maybe 30 minutes after a monthly test was sent. And there are four triangle stations in Seattle and I got them. Nice. So you don't, so uh, you, you can actually be, you can just tune in minutes or even hours, depending on the purge time, right after the alert is issued and it'll still ring your radio. And if you tune a multiple, and there's no duplication thing either, you say you have another triangle station in your area and you get a ring. you get the alert off the triangle, uh, like WSPA, and then you tune to the other triangle station, it'll ring for both. And then it'll and it actually keep, if you keep it tuned, it might actually ring more than once that same alert. I've yeah. had that happen to me before. This just goes to show you, and this, by the way, this guy is an expert on what he does. So, this spark, it's just, it just proves how revolutionary that this spark is. Because I find the fact that it can receive AM, FM alerts as simple as this is pretty interesting. Because, no wonder you guys tortured me to get it for so long. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah. That is the way that this radio can receive alerts. It's very, it's somewhat complicated for newer members, but once you get the hang of it, you will start to understand it more like I do. Because I've been DXing for under a year. Well, actually over, over two years, actually. I've been DXing for over two years. And most of the help I have received was from Heatcats. So, yeah, there's, there's one reason why I understand what he is saying, because the things that he is saying is relatively simple for me, but if you guys don't know what he is talking about, don't worry. We all have to start somewhere. Yeah. Because... We have group. We have got us in the DX and group where you can... Yeah. Oh, and by the way... If you're... If you're really close to becoming a Spark owner, I have another um, server, and I'm going to send you the link since you're a Spark owner now. This is a private server that I created, so you can join it. I'll give you the rules. But... What is this? IBOC and Digital Radio Enthusiasts. Huh. IBOC. Yep. IBOC. Um, HD Radio is a type of IBOC technology. In band on channel. All right, I will... I will Again, go ahead and, uh, server. sorry. Oh, it's the private server, so um, I'm not going to let anybody, uh, I will actually choose who to send invites to, but. Um, right. Oh, we did release it last, I think. Yeah. Um, but, I will, I will sort out the questions in Launchpad later because I'll, I'll do it after I'm finished with the video, but yeah. Basically, for those of you newer guys, for, you know, like, your newbie DXers, for those of you out there, basically what he said for the past 10 minutes is, basically, if you have a spark, and if it has a triangle, it will go off for any AM, FM alerts received. 
That is basically what he is saying. Yeah. So anyways, um, let's go ahead and move on to the next feature on this radio. And that would be the tuning region options. So you can go down to like Romania where there's HD radio or the Philippines where there's HD radio and you can get and you'll be able to tune to all the frequencies. And this is what the tuning region is for. It's not just for the U.S. It can be worldwide as well. No matter where you go, the Spark always has the tuning region option available. So here are the tuning regions. Tuning option number A is 87.5 through 108.0 at 100 kilohertz. Tuning region B, which is what I use and which is what the most common tuning region is used in the U.S., is tuning option B, U.S. and Canada, yeah, is 87.5 through 107.9 at 200 kilohertz. The next option is tuning region C at 87.5 through 108.0 at 50 kilohertz. The reason why it, the different kilohertz are there is because it gives you more or less options to tune into several stations. Because if it's like 50 kilohertz, it will, will not tune into the, um, you know, it won't let you tune into certain stations like 107.5 or 9. It won't do it like two at a time. It'll do it like in a certain way, which I am not familiar with because I have never gotten around to it. But basically, it'll give you less tuning options based on where you live. And the last one, which is tuning region D, is 76.0 through 108.0 megahertz at 100 kilohertz. 76 through 86 isn't used in the U.S. They just aren't used in the U.S. This is a... I knew that's um, Japan. Huh? That's like Japan. Yeah. This is used in foreign countries like Japan, like he said. Because this is a pretty revolutionary feature that the Spark has. Because not only can this radio pick up HD stations from the U.S. and Canada, you could go anywhere in the world and pick up HD radio stations with this thing. Like, if I were to go all the way down to Romania, or Japan, or Italy, or Sweden, or Finland, if I were in any of those countries right now, or Switzerland even, I could use any of these four tuning regions to pick up HD stations down in those countries and still pick up stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, that HD signal outside of North America don't really exist. They're only in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, Philippines, and I believe also Romania. Someone said Brazil as well. So hey, Brazil. But still. But still good for getting art. But still, no matter where you are in the world, these tuning regions are here for a reason. It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. H. It doesn't have to be HD radio stations either. You can just pick up normal stations, like. And keep in mind, guys, if you get confused by the term HD radio, that does not mean that this radio will only pick up HD radio stations. It can still pick up normal yeah. radio stations. Like, for example, 106.9 WMIT here in Black Mountain is not an HD station, even though it has HD, um, an HD1 station, even though I can't pick it up for some reason. It, it has an HD station, but it doesn't have to be an HD station for you to receive it through the Spark. 97.3 WKBC is not an HD station, yet I can still receive it. 90.7 .7 WFAE in Charlotte is not an HD station, yet I can still pick it up. 92.1 WMNC in Morganton, that is not an HD station, but I can still pick it up. So, just yeah, wanted to point that out there. The majority of my stations are in HD stations. Um, you will know, get the RD which is a really useful feature of it. You'll see the call sign display. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's not. It depends on the machine you're turning to. Yes. Most of them are right. And if you go to other countries in the world, uh, actually the Spark and Prague catching RDS in other countries, um, you can still receive those stations. Um, so I got the region, these tuning regions. Uh, region 1 would be Europe, Africa, the former Soviet Union, Mongolia, the Middle East, west of the Persian Gulf, including Iraq. 
and the region two covers the Americas, including Greenland and some of the Eastern Pacific Islands. And region three is um, basically non-Soviet Asia, uh, east of Iran and including Iran and most of Oceania. So that's like Australia, New Zealand. So that yeah. should. Oh. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, so just because this radio is an HD radio doesn't mean that you cannot pick up regular FM stations or AM stations for that matter. You can still pick them up, no problem. The only reason it just has the HD radio badge on it is because it can pick up HD stations and receive alerts from HD stations. That's the only reason why. But yeah, yeah, this radio has four tuning regions, A, B, C, and D. And it's the same thing with FM, because actually, if I go over and switch to FM mode, by the way, well, I said FM mode, I meant AM mode. But yeah, there is actually another way to switch to between AM and FM. You just press the power button once, and it will say AM, and if you press it again, it will say FM. You just press the power button once, and it will switch to AM or FM. Now, for the AM stations... Hold it, press it. Yeah, if you hold it like this, it'll just turn off to conserve power. If you turn it on, it will just turn it on again. And it will be left off at the exact same band that you left it on. In this case, AM for that demonstration right there. Here are the tuning regions for the AM stations, by the way. All right, I use tuning region B, like I said. Here's tuning region A. 522 to 1620 kilohertz at 9 kilohertz. This is the region that is used in the U.S. and Canada, which is what I use, because I live in North Carolina, and he lives in Washington State. So this is the tuning region that we both use. 530 through 1710 kilohertz at 10 kilohertz. 10 kilohertz means it will, like, for example, if you're on, like, 540 kilohertz, if you're tuned to 540 kilohertz, it will tune up or down 10 kilohertz. Like, for example, it's like adding plus 10 or subtracting 10 from 540. Because 540... Or 10 kilohertz spacing is what, um, like, 530, 540, 550, 560, and so on to 1710. Yes, this is basically what it is. Kilohertz spacing. Frequency spacing is what the term is, I believe. Um, and if you are on the FM, you'll notice the number of frequencies, like 96.0, 107.2, or something like that. However, if you're like on, if you're using a radio like the Sanjian that doesn't have any tuning regions, the Sanjian actually just goes ahead and goes through all the numbers. And my alert works is flashing. No same. That's just lovely. Oh, that's lovely. Anyway. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah, this is the most common tuning region that we use. 530 to 1710. Here is tuning region C. 522 to 1620 at 9 kilohertz. And D, 522 to 1629 at 9 kilohertz. Funny story, actually. When I first unboxed this on Christmas Day, I did not know that it was on a different tuning region. So I tried to tune in to several stations... Like 840, 850, 760, 780, 1470. And I couldn't tune it in. I, I was like, what the hell is this? I had no idea. And then I went into the menu and I realized that this radio had tuning regions. And I'm like, wait, this radio can go worldwide too? Damn. But yeah, I was surprised when I found out that this had a tuning region option because this Spark is already a revolutionary radio in itself with all the other features that it has. And by the way, Heatcats, I believe that your Spark is newer than mine because my host version is 5.41 and my DSP version is 2.0.8. I think yours says 6 point something. I don't know. I believe yours is newer than mine, though. Yours has to be newer. Um, so, mine, once I get it here, um, uh, mine is 6.1, and DSP is 2.0.11. 
Yeah, yours is newer than mine. I figured. Huh? Interesting. Yeah, your your spark is newer. I have an older spark. But then again, this Ooh. spark was used. So... Ooh, mine is new. No, mine was used. I got it off of eBay. Not Amazon. That's That explains why the box is in such bad shape. It's like full of scuff marks and everything on the back. It's, ah. Yeah, it's used. It's not a new spark. But, I had no idea that yours was newer or, or older mean, than mine. That is interesting. Yeah, mine is an older spark, apparently. So, again, it won't affect the performance of the radio. It's still great, regardless. Yes. I think doing NorCal, dude, might have the same. Yeah. It's like, you know, the older versions of the Sanji and CL100. Like, the older versions had the, uh, since we're on the topic of old and new, on the older Sanjians, the public alert logo used to be on top of here and down here. But this is the newer Sanjian, so. And this one, this one I got new, unlike the Spark. But this is the newer Sanjian, as you can see. On the bottom left corner, it says public alert. But the older models had the public alert logo on the top of the speaker grill. <sighs> but the thing is, with the Spark, is that there isn't really that much of a difference, no matter what firmware or version you have. It's still an amazingly great radio. So, we've still got two more features to cover. And that will be the DXing range and... The speaker quality so let's go ahead and get to those last two features for the spark okay so we are about to do some am dxing so let me go on my bed which is a complete mess right now because i just removed all my christmas decorations unfortunately so I gotta do something about that but yeah all the christmas decorations are gone now hey Gotta wait for New Year's Eve now. So, yeah. 2019, here I come. 2019, here I come. Anyway. So, let me get all this stuff out of the way. Okay. So, I'm on my bed right now, as you can clearly tell. And I have it on 1620. But we're going to tune into some stations that I actually know about. So, first station I'm going to do is... 840 WHAS all the way in Louisville, Kentucky. No, I have not. And by the way, while you're on about that subject, the only triangle station I ever got so far is WSPA. Anyways, this is 8:40, by the way. Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. The Republican Party hasn't even sniffed the winning in, 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 in some cases, decades. Great, two years ago. But I'm worried about two years from now. Yeah, well, that's what I'm worried about. Uh, now, all I'm saying is, I'm not. I don't want to start a big little ruckus. But all I'm saying. Pence was a great governor of the state of Indiana. I don't care what anybody says. He did a great job here. Yeah, well, I appreciate the call, Gary. I, you know, I open up the phone lines to uh, alternate opinions because, I, you know, I don't want to... This is not a dictatorial monarchy on the show. So I appreciate the call. Thanks for calling in. I just... Uh, folks, I, I just see it differently. I, I, when I look for a politician, someone in the, in, the, in the seat of the presidency, when I look for characteristics in there, Character, characteristics. I want someone who is going to do what they told me they were going to do when I donated my money, when I donated my time, uh, when I donated my, my, my... This is 830 WCCO all the way in Minneapolis. Yeah, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Let me walk over here, actually, because I can get a better signal here. So donate by calling 1-800-FL today. 
And uh, again, thank you in advance for helping to support the work. Then again, another reason why I'm probably not getting a good signal right now is because it's only it's only 9.30 p.m. 9.28 to be exact. So it's not really that late in the night to do DXing. It's quite early. Let's try another station. Let's try um, 760 WJR all the way in Detroit. They get this idea that there was going to be some, you know, grand rap rochement with them, and we we're going to have a sit down and roast s'mores together, is over. The left is not interested. They are not interested in smoking the peace pipe with you. They are interested only in destroying conservatives. That is it. All right, I'm Dan Bongino with for Mark Levin. Give us a call if you want to join the show, 877-381-3811. We'll be right back. Our nation's oldest colleges were founded to teach students to seek truth. Let's try 720 WGN. Not really that well of a signal. You know what? Let's try it. Let's just try it. Let's try 1190 Whoa, whoa. If I can get whoa, whoa. I mean, this, this is the fundamental problem in this country. You know, the education system is just totally falling apart. We got to wake up and, and start focusing on this so that we stay competitive uh, on the global stage. And this is the challenge that we face in the 21st century. Anyway, we want to hear from the rest of you guys. We have great, great guests coming up. So the phone lines are open. Call us at 844-900-2825. Again, this is the Buck Sexton Show, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. Let's wait for the call sign. Whoa, whoa, man, you did it again. Another successful Penny Pitch Radiothon. It's Big Brother's Big Sisters Real Men Read program. And the angels from Aaron Towns for Grieving Children sharing your donation. Here we go. One hundred, two thousand, one hundred and sixty-nine dollars. You can fill out your donation to the total. Log on to WoWo.com for details. And thank you from Big Brother's Big Sisters, Aaron Towns, and WoWo. 1190 AM, 107.5 FM. Depend on it. Fox News, I'm Richard Jordan. President Trump is meeting with his top advisors tonight over dinner. The vice president... <laughs> that was 1190 Whoa Whoa. All the way in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I believe that one has HD. Or, or we did. Huh. I, I didn't get the HD format for some reason, but I... That was whoa whoa. Yeah, it's more complicated on AM. Yeah, I heard something about that. I heard it's easier to get on FM than it is on AM. Yeah, you would want to be tuned to eleven ninety for and you would start blinking HD one. Right. There's another station in Ohio actually. Sports WGN. Attention investors, not earning There's WGN. Big time. All my friends. Any number that the president can sign. Republicans in the House have refused to take up a short funding measure that did pass unanimously in the This Senate. is 700 they WLW in Cincinnati, bill. Ohio. $5 billion to fund President Trump's border wall project. Something that $8 billion. For a road, the same bullet killed. This is 770 WABC in New York. This is 880 WCBS also in New York. This freaking spark is picking up. It's, this is like AM station galore for this radio. This is 1140 WRVA in Richmond, Virginia. Wow! Shade! What? 
Wow, nothing. What's going on? Made with zero THC and backed by third-party certificate of analysis at Indiana Law. I'm keeping it on whoa, whoa for good luck. Because why not? As you just heard from earlier with me DXing on this spark, the speaker quality is very exceptional because this is a fairly tiny speaker. It's very clear. It's bassy. It's it's just amazing for this size of a radio. I mean, it's like a little mini boom box. It is. It's like you just bring it around. It's an HD boom box. I mean, and for 60 bucks, new, what more could you ask for? I mean, it's somewhat worth it in my opinion, actually, because... Expensive radios like these are expensive for a reason because they have all these revolutionary features that want to keep you like interested in doing the DXing hobby as well as listening to music and checking on the public radio news and stuff like that. That's why these radios are so expensive and they're so good at what they do too. The speaker quality is good. The DXing range is good. The quality of the material is all good. The screen is fairly bright and readable. It's liquid crystal. It's actually dot matrix. It's actually a dot matrix display, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's a dot matrix. It's a dot matrix LCD display, which is really nice. But yeah, also one last feature, and I promise this is the last one, before I um, go ahead and close it off here. There's actually an earphone jack on the side of the radio in case you want to listen to it privately. So if you don't want to wake anybody up, you can just plug in your pair of headphones or earbuds or something like that. Well, so you can DX like in a stealth mode, if you will, and not wake anybody else up as long as you remain quiet. But still, you can just plug a pair of headphones into the side of the radio and just continue to DX normally. So now we're going to go into the final thoughts of this radio. Here we go. So, in conclusion, on the Spark SHD-TX2, for a radio like this, it's definitely worth it. For DXers out there, it is it is absolutely worth it in every way possible. It is better than the Sanjian in so many ways, even though the Sanjian has the wetter, 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 wetter. So weather is now wetter. Giggity. I'm not going to go there. Anyways, yeah. Even though the Sanjian has the weather function, and this one doesn't. But, like I said, this radio makes up for that with the HD radio features. Because it is, it is a supremely DXing radio. It is supremely good at what it does. It does an exceptional job at catching reception, both on AM and FM gets much more clearer signals, has a lot more capable things than the Sanjian does. But keep Just in mind... For everyone, it's not a weather radio. Yes. But keep in mind, just because this radio is better than the Sanjian, that doesn't make the Sanjian a bad radio. Like, if you don't want to get a Spark, or if you can't afford a Spark, there's always a cheaper option. And that cheaper option can be the Sanjian if you are lucky enough. But like I said, this spark was used, so I got this for like 40 bucks on eBay. So there's that. Jesus. Yeah, 40 bucks. I got this for 40 bucks, and it was used, and it only has a couple of minor scratches on the freaking radio itself. But yeah, I got mine for like a pretty good bargain right here. 40 bucks for a freaking used spark. Yeah. So, yeah, I got this one for 40 bucks. Hee <laughs> hee. Anyways, I guess that is about it for reviewing the Spark. So, thank you all for watching this amazing video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for future videos and content. Also, make sure to subscribe to Heat Cats and follow his Twitter page. And by the way, for those of you who want to find out... Sorry, what? Follow my Instagram for RDS picks from the Spark and yes. other HD radio. Yes. Like his page on Facebook as well. Follow him on Twitter. Like his Instagram and follow his Instagram. Also, if you want to join a group, an EAS group, 
that is full of sensible and knowledgeable people. Join the Global Weather and EAS Society as well as the International DXing Group today. So, again, join Gwes and join IDXG today. Click join love. That is all. So, without further ado, this is Clay Ranger 143 signing out along with... Ecats. And thanks again for allowing me to make this video with you since you know pretty much are an expert about this type of stuff with the spark. So it was an honor to do a video with you. So I look You're forward to allowing me to do this. Um, so what are we going to do about this ES block? <laughs> that is coming soon. Stay tuned, folks. Yep. So... Anyways, this is Clay Ranger 143 and Heat Cats signing out, wishing you a very happy new year of 2019.